Okay, what I'm about to share with you is preliminary information. Um, as the investigation proceeds, uh, it is possible that facts or things that are known to us now will change over time. <clears throat> but I'm going to provide you with the best information that I have available at this time. At about uh, nine minutes after noon, we had officers that responded to a call uh, from a DOC officer, a Department of Corrections officer. Uh, he had been in communication by phone with one of the people that he supervises who was in the downtown area. Um, he, was, he was approximately at Post and Riverside at that time, and he told his DOC officer that he was suicidal and that he was armed with a knife. So officers were dispatched to the area. The subject walked eastbound along Riverside. As he was walking down Riverside, he displayed the knife. Um, <clears throat> he held the knife up towards one individual's throat. And then he also uh, displayed the knife and backed another individual down the block. When officers arrived on scene, they attempted, three different officers attempted less lethal techniques. They each tried to, uh, to deploy a taser. Each of those tasers was unsuccessful. Uh, after those, those tasers were not successful, um, two officers engaged him with, with lethal force and were able to bring him under control. After the shooting, uh, officers moved in and immediately started uh, attempting to uh, provide medical aid and the individual is transported to an area hospital where last I had heard he is uh, undergoing surgery. Um, the SEER investigation is now ongoing and the Sheriff's Department is going to be the lead investigative agency. Are there any questions that I can answer for any of you? I believe that he was born in 1988. He was being he was being supervised by the Department of Corrections. Yes. Can you tell us which agency was it, Spokane Police, that engaged the suspect, shot the suspect? Yes, it was the Spokane Police Department. And do you know how many officers fired their weapons? Two. We believe two. Do you know how many times the person was shot? I know that uh, there were approximately four to five rounds that were. Uh, fired. Is that between the two officers? Correct. Well, Combined. 11, 10, 9, 8, 9, 9, 9, um, were the people 7, in the nearby buildings 6, 5, uh, like evacuated, 4, or how did that process work? So this situation was very fluid. It happened very quickly, and so when officers uh, arrived in the area, they immediately went to the the threat, the man with the knife, and they attempted less lethal means to bring him under control. There was no time to do evacuations in the area. So when you say that um, they tried to taser him, at this point when he was being tasered, was he coming at the officers with the knife or was he holding it against somebody else? I mean, what was the situation there? The investigation that the sheriff's office is lead on will have some of those details in the future. I don't have that information right now. So there were three officers that attempted uh, less lethal. There were two officers that used uh, lethal force. And there were other officers that assisted in providing medical, uh, medical assistance. And then, and then obviously, as, uh, after the shooting, other officers came into the area to assist with the scene. So the officers that did use the lethal force, are they on you? Uh, they will be, yes. And then how will that affect the department? services, especially with other shootings in the past. Right. So um, <clears throat> any officers that are placed on, on leave, if we, um, if we reach minimum staffing for any, of our patrol, uh, for any of our patrol teams, we will call in additional resources and make sure that we ensure a minimum level of staffing uh, uh, regardless of, of this situation. Is that happening now that you have to do that? Right now? No. No, we, we haven't placed anybody on leave yet. That, that, will, be, that will be forthcoming. Does the um, amount of police 
Philly shootings just in the last two weeks shock you at all? I mean, it seems like just last year we had five total in the year, and now we're seeing four in the last two weeks. I mean, what is that like for the department? It's, uh, it's very unusual. Um, it concerns me the level of violence that we're seeing in the community and the, and the level of violence that's being directed towards our officers. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm certainly concerned about the safety of our officers, the safety of uh, the members of the community. You mentioned that uh, tasers were deployed as lethal, less lethal force. Was mace or pepper spray used at all? I don't have that information, but not to my knowledge. Is the use of pepper spray or mace a standard tactic for the Spokane Police Department? Uh, our officers are equipped with uh, pepper spray, yes. Are they, are they trained to use it? Yes. You said going into surgery, do you have any idea on his current condition aside from surgery? I haven't heard a, a medical condition that was provided. Uh, he was stabilized and sent to surgery but I haven't received an update probably in about 90 minutes, so. And just confirming no officers were injured in this incident, correct? Correct. Do you know how much longer this area is gonna be shut down for, exactly, estimate? I, I don't know. The, the sheriff's office is in charge of the scene here and they'll keep this scene locked down as long as they need to be able to record and ga gather all the evidence that they need. Wait, just to be clear, um, you can't say if the suspect came up officers with a knife. We can only say that he had a knife and was threatening people. Yeah, I don't have in, any information. The investigation um, that the sheriff's office is, is lead on, okay. they will they will have additional details. I have just have some preliminary information from, from a witness at this point. Okay, that's good. If we, um, the suspect called his parole officer saying that he was suicidal, was there any attempt to roll out Yes, and so, uh, like I said before, this situation was fluid. The individual uh, displayed, not only had a knife, but he displayed a knife. Um, and when he was communicating with his DOC officer, he was also walking through downtown Spokane. And there, as you can see, much like, like right now, there are people on the sidewalks, there's people in the shops. And so our immediate response is to is to get control of that individual and to make sure that he isn't a threat to anyone else. So I guess I, I don't really know if you're answering the question where, where mental health uh, resources rolled out in addition, uh, in, in addition to this response, or had they not shown up yet, or were they not even contacted? So the, the BHU, uh, the Behavioral Health Unit, the partners with the Spokane Police Department is is out of the downtown precinct. And so this is the type of call that they would have been en route to. Um, I do not have information as to whether they were en route or on scene at the, at the time of, of this incident.